Uh, my name is Jim Healy. I'm the senior project manager for Flinko at the Boone Pickens Stadium project here. I graduated from Oklahoma State University in 1986 in construction management. I'm happy to be back to work on the football stadium. I'm Rob Huggins. I've uh, been with Flintco for about 30 years. Uh, I'm the uh, overall uh, uh, job superintendent. And uh, I guess uh, we're ready to go take a tour. Let's go. Outside the stadium, of course, is the basement. The basement is huge uh, and encompasses the entire size of the project that you can see out here. And it goes down about 15 feet deep. The, uh, there's a drainage system underneath there. It's basically built like a boat. I mean, there's some Class A office space, some very nice uh, meeting rooms and things, locker rooms and, and uh, offices down in the basement, some museum type areas. And so we've got to keep water out of that. So it's been very difficult to, uh, to put, we, we, we pay a lot of attention to putting in a very nice waterproofing system to make sure that we don't have leakage down in the basement. And that walking surface, the concrete slab you see down there is going to be the walking surface coming off the ground level. And so fans will be walking on that, rain will be blowing, and we're going to have to treat that with a waterproofing coating also to keep it dry. Down in the basement we've got locker rooms for the, for the players, some nice locker rooms, very nice workout facilities, meeting rooms for the offense and the defense. Uh, there's a storage area down there for the kitchen for, for catering. There's a bullet has a stall down there with a real nice wood finished uh, gate on it, right down by the the south corner entrance there so we can come right around the corner and come out to the field when we score touchdowns. Uh, That's on the trekking dock. We, we, we have the ability to bring uh, three semi trucks in and park them underneath the stadium. If you look out there on the far side where the concrete truck is out there right now, there's a ramp that comes down into the stadium. Hester Street and Washington Street are to be connected between Cordell Hall and the, and the engineering building over there so that uh, you'll be able to take an off-ramp off of Hester Street or off of Washington Street, whichever we want to call it, and come down into the stadium and you can park three semi trucks in there so when they're unloading equipment for orange peel, they'll be able to drive right down to the field level and use a forklift to unload stuff and bring it out onto the field. And also the equipment rooms are down there too. We're going to have first class storage for the, for the football equipment, all the helmets and jerseys and different styles of jerseys and thousands of pairs of tennis shoes that get stored down there. It's amazing how much gear they have. There, 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 there's an amphitheater capable of seating most of the team or all the team. I think it's 250 person theater. Uh, so they can get everyone together and talk about the upcoming games. Um, we, we have a deck of the concrete. We're bringing the structural steel and the precast and the lower bowl around first. We actually had to drive the 250 ton crane out onto the deck in order to be able to construct that lower bowl. The, some, of the structural, some of the steel beams and some of the precast picks are fairly heavy. So we've driven that crane out onto the deck. In order to do that, we had to reinforce it underneath with some two by two timbers, some very heavy, heavy support timbers to shore that slab up so the slab wouldn't bend or crack. So that crane is, uh, is there right now, setting the precast and the steel. When he backs out, uh, we'll have another crane erecting the outside, the outer bowl. He's there. He's, he's there, he's there as of last week. Starting started to, Friday. Starting to erect structural steel on the outside bowl. So pretty soon you'll see structural steel rising up above those precast risers. Uh, behind it. That crane is going to move over here around uh, sometime in August. Yes. Uh, that crane will move over here and set in the slab over here and you're, sorry, erecting the lower bowl over here. Come game time this year you'll see the lower bowl of precast probably 75 percent complete and then you'll see the structural steel starting to rise up behind it on the south side and starting to come across the stadium. Uh, it'll look a little different. We're not putting any club seats in the west end zone. So instead of seeing the orange club seats come across the, from, the, from the south side here, when that reaches the west end zone, it'll become three stories of glass storefront. The first level, which is the level where the seats are right now, will be pulled forward to glass, and that's going to be the coaches' offices. All the coaches' offices will run along the west end zone of the stadium. They'll have a view of the field. It'll be great for bringing recruits in and you know, showing them the field and the facilities we have here. The next level up will be suites, or potentially offices. We're, we're still kind of working out how that's going to work the uh, top level will be suites. So you'll be able to walk from the suites level all the way around the stadium in the, in the horseshoe shape. 460,000 square feet of conditioned space in the west end zone. So it's a, it's a huge project counting the basement level and then the, a couple floors built up up above that we don't have on the north and south side. It's about double the square footage of either the north or south side. Or if you want, uh, the, the square footage of conditioned space in the west end zone is equal to the north and south side combined. 
You can see the, the precast risers going in and you can see the handicap platforms up there. There's a lot more accommodation for handicapped people to have a, a variety of seating in the west end zone. Um, Rob, you want to talk a little bit about the, the sequence? or? Yeah, uh, right now what, uh, what we're looking at uh, in the areas that uh, uh, we've got some precast that is left out. Uh, you can see over here to the uh, to the far, uh, I guess far east and south, uh, we have a vomitory that comes in right there. Uh, we're, we're waiting on those pieces of precast so we can uh, complete the bowl in those three areas that are left out at this point. Once those are put in place and we can finish the precast uh, in those areas, we'll be able to walk the big crane that's on the slab out and uh, uh, start moving him towards uh, the other or the, the last half of the precast and steel uh, uh, th that you're seeing right there. So uh, like Jim was saying, uh, towards the end of August we'll be about 75% uh, with this bold area steel and precast. As well as uh, in August, we'll have our tie-in concrete uh, over on the south side uh, uh, complete to the uh, south stadium and through that area. But that tie-in is interesting because the mandate from T. Boone Pickens and Mike Holder early on was that we have a seamless transition so you can walk from row 45 on the south side all the way through the west end zone and come back around to the north side and walk through row 45. It would have been a lot easier to put a little little partition wall there and block it off and have just the crossway the cross walkways go through because the existing stadium has different rise and run the steps that they're, they're, they're they vary just in the as-built configuration of the stadium and it's different on the north side as well so transitioning from the south side to the north side we had to measure every rise and run of every step then measure every rise and run of every step on the north side and try to find a way to make that blend together so it'd be seamless walking around one of the solutions we have to the problem was to leave out that wedge shape of, of, a, of, of seating bowl on each side where it connects to the existing building. We put the precast in at an average elevation for each rise and each run in the stadium all the way around. And then when you get down to the section where you tie into the building, we're going to put concrete forms in there. We'll put the concrete form in at the existing and the concrete form in at the precast. And then we'll pour that concrete in so it makes a nice level transition and fits up exactly with the existing stadium. So you'll see that little wedge shape on the south end get poured this year, like Rob was talking about before this football season. And you'll see the same wedge shape taking, taking place over here on the north side during the football season. That we'll, we'll put that precast over and you'll see that wedge shape being left there and probably be pouring that after the football season this year. And also, uh, for this football season, uh, the plaza deck will be completed, uh, completely poured out. Uh, you, you can see all the activities going on now. I've got reinforcing being tied uh, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, last third. Uh, and uh, anyway, it'll be uh, completely poured out. This big crane will be moved over here uh, to this, uh, this half uh, or the north half. And, uh, But one of the, one and of the, the tunnel will be complete also, which is on the far south end. One of the challenges of this project, as well as the first two projects, is working with the active football stadium. Game day operations have always been a big deal for us, getting fans in and out of the stadium when we're, uh, when, we're, when we're building the north and south side. We don't have so much of a fan interface on the west end zone here for this year, but we do have the band coming through and bullet coming through and cheerleaders and whatever else has to get down onto the field. So we'll have to take some safety precautions to isolate the, the construction area from the from the fans. You can see we have a soccer camp going on the field right now. A lot of times they have practices on the field or uh, special events down the field and we're always conscious of those events to make sure that we have the fences put up and the construction area isolated from the from the playing field. It's been great though to be involved in the in the in the upgrades going on right. It's very exciting to see the that what's happening at OSU right now, being a, an alumni and always a football fan and a, a sports fan of Oklahoma State University and graduating from here in 86, it's just nice to come back and be able to see the rise of these facilities from, you know, which were some of the lesser facilities in the Big 12 to now being some of the best in the entire country. 
above the mezzanine level. The mezzanine level is a public area, the, you know, the second public area, the upper upper level, which comes in at these upper level vomitories here. That's the mezzanine level. Above that, you have the arena connection level, which didn't get built out on the north side and the south side. But the arena connection level in the west end zone is built out, and it's a kitchen. It's a it's a team table kitchen that provides uh, food service twice a day for all the athletes at OSU. It's not just the football players that come over here to eat, but they're gonna have a real nice restaurant in one of the upper levels that'll look out over the field that will serve all the athletes at OSU two meals a day uh, all during the school year. So they have a really nice kitchen facility we're putting in. They can make sure they serve top end food. Uh, that's another demand of T. Boone Pickens and Mike Holders that they serve uh, the athletes at OSU some of the best food in the country. And I've had a sample of it. It is some of the best food in the country. A lot of people have asked us about the massive trench we cut across the north side of the stadium here during the last football season and went on through the basketball season. It's a, it's a mass, it's a storm drain, a four by six storm drain structure we put in. It comes from Duck Street where the creek is up on uh, Duck Street and approximately McElroy up there. It came down Duck Street last year along the front face of Gallagher Iba and then trenched across the north side of the stadium here. It was about 25 feet deep. We had to get drainage from the football stadium and then had to have fall that went all the way out to Duck Street. Uh, it's designed for the 200 year, 200 year rainstorm, which we got a 125 year rainstorm here recently. So it's a good thing we did that. Uh, we did come down here and watch to see if it backed up into the stadium and it didn't with 125 year floods. So I think we're, uh, I think we did a good thing there. Uh, it, 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 we had to bring a special shoring system in for that to go 25 feet deep and you just get into a whole different set of working conditions putting in a, a box storm sewer down that deep. The, the locker is a good example. Uh, this is a, a, a mock-up of the lockers that are going to be going in uh, in the uh, football locker room. Uh, this is a good example of uh, the quality of work that uh, uh, we're, we're going to be uh, installing. Uh, these, these custom cabinets, uh, locker cabinets uh, that uh, we're looking at right here, uh, there's probably nothing in the country like it. Uh, so it's uh, uh, top of the line. Uh, this, of course, this is where the uh, uh, shoulder pads will be going separated from just the rest of it, along with a, a real nice foot locker at the bottom. Every, everything is ventilated, so yeah. you have air circulation through the shoulder pad area and the, and the shoe area to keep things fresh. Yes. All the uniforms go off to laundry and an adjacent facility into the locker room for laundry and washing and equipment care. If they need bolts, you know, screws tightened on their helmets, all that kind of stuff. Th those facilities will all be down in the basement of the west end zone. Yes. Well, one thing you'll notice about the job site here is that everyone's wearing safety glasses and hard hats. We're very safety conscious out here. We have over 200 workers working on the job site right now. And with that many people working, doing different trades, working on you know, different areas, uh, it's very, very important for us to have a good, strong safety program. Every individual out here has gone through an orientation through Flint Coast program as well as their own individual company's safety program about their individual task. We're actually doing stretching exercises out here every morning. Each guy on the job site is getting together with their crew and doing uh, some, some loosening up stretching exercises to help avoid some back pulls and a couple issues like that that we've been having. We haven't had any serious accidents, fortunately, and we don't plan to, but you never know when something like that's going to come up. So we, we're doing everything we can to avoid that situation. We've gradually been crewing up. We have about 200 people working on the job right now at this minute, and uh, we'll slowly be adding to that crew as the work goes on. The, the composition of our crew is going to change. Our concrete workers will be slacking off a little bit. We'll start cutting back on concrete workers probably in about a month. And uh, we'll be doing the upper level decks with concrete work. Steel workers will still be going strong and we'll start bringing in some of the other trades. A lot more masons. We have a lot of masons working down below grade right now. Rob, how many do we have on board right now? Probably masons? Right now we've got about uh, 15. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll be starting uh, uh, the uh, concessions areas here on the Plaza level at the end of this month. So uh, we'll be probably doubling that crew just in in the next month. So, so, so we'll probably max out a crew of 400 people to 450 people by the time we're done. But right now, like we said, the masons are working down in the basement right now, putting up all the block walls to make the, the structure for the walls in the basement. They'll be coming up here, working underneath the precast risers shortly here to start building the concession stands and those risers under the risers for the mezzanine and plaza level. And then uh, moving out to the outboard brick veneer of the building uh, after that. And that's when you'll really see them crewing up to a lot of people.
location where I'm standing right now at the corner of the, the progress of structural steel right now is about where the scoreboard and the old storm drain structure was. When we did the excavation of the, the main excavation for the hole, controlling water was a huge deal because if we didn't control the water when in a big rainfall, it would wash all that orange mud out onto the football field and then Mike Gundy would be mad at me. So we, uh, we, so we left the storm drain structure in the center here and you saw this huge box that stood here right where I'm at for a long time as we dug the hole around it and kept the storm drain structure in service. And then connecting up that existing storm, that new storm drain I was talking to you about that went along the north side of the stadium was a big deal for us because it allowed us to get all the water off the job site. And fortunately we were able to complete that before the monsoon rains came, that 125 year event, or we would have had a lot of problems with water on the job site here. So keeping water control in a hole this big and an excavation this big, especially adjacent to the football field like we have, has always been a big deal for us, a big concern of ours. And I think we've lived through the worst of it now. and. Uh, We've, we've tested it out with some huge storms and we're going to be okay with it. So it's downhill from here. You can see over here, the concession stand is a little bit farther along. We have the mezzanine level decking, which will be the floor for the mezzanine level concession stand. And then the roof above it, the decking, sheet metal decking is already put in for it. So we're making progress. The next step is to bring the masonry in and, and put masonry up both levels to enclose the, the stand. The masonry should uh, will be starting in about, uh, about one month up through here. We have the end zone fenced off here right now. We're gonna, in the next month here, we're gonna do some modifications to the field. Uh, there's a f fairly quick drop off from the back of the end zone to the west end zone wall here. And we're gonna fix that. There's a crown in the field. So the center of the field actually has a pretty good drop off. We're gonna roll back the carpet and add some sand in there and level it off a little bit. So it's a little more gradual uh, drop off for drainage to the edge of the field. But not so that a player would, would uh, pick up momentum or speed as he's heading towards the wall. This, this is one of the plaza level vomitories walking entering out onto the field. So when a fan comes out on game day at the ground level, this is what you'll see as you're walking out towards the field. got uh, some uh, uh, structural steel breaker beams that are adjacent to the South Stadium. Uh, in that area, that, that would be cast in place concrete, which will match up with the three that we set uh, uh, west of the South Stadium. Uh, that cast in place will match up with the three cast and match up with the existing South Stadium. That will be the transition point in through that area. Again, Cast in place the reason that's cast in place concrete is because of the differences in step by step of the existing stadium over there, being able to tie them into the new stadium yeah. and without having a, a, an adjustment of an inch or so in each step. That's right, and we'll have the same condition on the north side. You'll notice as they're grinding off the precast up there and cutting the joints in the precast, each piece of precast is, is leveled up with shims and set in place, uh, anchored in place with bolts in the back side, and then uh, dowels in the front. All the, all the holes are grouted in and covered up and then at, at some point in time we'll have a, a sealer put on top of the precast to seal it all in. Okay. And then, and then, of course, uh, uh, then we got a bleaching system that will uh, connect to the, the back side or the riser section of all the bleach. What we're doing right now is vacuuming up the rubber and the sand and the carpet. Those fibers of grass are actually three, four inches long and it's all filled up with, with uh, ground up rubber to make a, a playing surface. So they vacu you have to vacuum all that up in order to be able to roll the carpet back to change the grade in the carpet up against the wall here. Okay, right now uh, we're coming in uh, the, uh, the field uh, south of the auditorium. You can see we've got water on, on the floor today. Right now we don't have all of our uh, plaza level uh, floor drains tied in as well as we've got some concrete uh, that, that uh, we still need to pour up top. Once that process is done, of course, all that waterproof 
the puzzle rather than it's waterproof or basically get the roof on top to assure that these conditions uh, obviously don't exist when we start painting. As you can see, there's a lot of work going on underground here right now. Everyone can see the work going on up above with the structural steel and the precast risers being put up above. But we have just as many people or perhaps more people working underground right now in the basement of the stadium, putting in the block walls, the conduit, the drain lines, the HVAC duct work, all the things that are going to go in down here. So we're starting the walls and the finish, the finish work down the basement here as we're finishing up the concrete and the, the bowl up above. These screws, these screws are going to move on through the job from the basement up to the mezzanine plaza level, then up to the arena connection level, and eventually to the suites and the club area when we finish those out. This shoring uh, off, off to uh, uh, the north of us right here uh, is, is the, an actual strip of concrete that we left out uh, that uh, will actually be poured back after 90 days of secure uh, time of concrete from the center of building back south. And we, sit, we have the same conditions from center building back north, another port strip over there. Um, again, we have to wait 90 days before we pour that in, making sure that all the concrete has done, all the shrinking that it's going to do prior to the setting of that concrete. Many people might have noticed while we were digging our hole, we had a lot of holes within the hole. So we dug the big hole, which was 95,000 yards of excavation, which all got moved to the north side of Hall of Fame, what we refer to as the Hills of McElroy up there. Uh, you've probably seen the big dirt piles up there. These holes within the hole are for the hydrotherapy pools. So there's, there's you know, treatment, the whole uh, team training area where they fix the wounded is down, it's gonna be down here in the stadium adjacent to the locker room. And these will be hydrotherapy pools in here where they'll be able to have cold water and hot water pools. And even a current pool where they go against the current to train to walk against the current. And uh, there'll be access all around the outside of the pool for maintenance. So the pool will set in here and you'll be able to walk around the bottom of the pool to, to take care of the equipment and that kind of thing that goes with it. Other holes we have that were deeper than the actual excavation would be for elevator shafts, uh, escalator pits, and those kinds of things. So what we're looking at right here is the uh, is the plumbing rough in for the bathrooms in the in the locker room area and the showers. All that will be encased in concrete block walls. As you can see, we've started here behind the behind the plumbing. The locker room is going to go from here to the west. Audio video? Video and whatnot. You just had to close the doors on the other side. But again, all the things in the meeting rooms. Down here in the distance, you can see the shoring for the concrete work that's not been poured yet. That's all the, the holds all the plywood up until the concrete's poured on top. And once the concrete on top has gotten its strength and can support itself, we can take that shoring off from underneath it. How many elevators are there, Rob? Three, this is a three bank elevator. And then we've got uh, we got a four bank. And so we got what seven elevators, I guess. So seven elevators total. Seven elevators. Well, we got eight. We've, we've also got a uh, freight freight elevator. Okay. So this is our first elevator shaft right here. We've got a total of seven elevators in the project plus a freight elevator, and uh, they go from the basement to the top. Uh, where the, where the, where the trucks are actually? Ice makers, etc. down through here. Trucks will actually back up on the other side of this wall over here, right? So we'll have to, so we, can, can we get over there?
That right here is actually the, the loading dock where the forklifts will take material off of the trucks. We can't get into the truck loading area where the trucks will actually back up right now because we are stripping off uh, concrete forms in there for the deck right now. Which is you just can port. see where our levelers are, will be though. We got two levelers here, we got a leveler back over here on this side. Three, I'm sorry. On the other side of the locker room where we're looking right now, there's going to be a, a workout facility with weight, room, weight rooms, weight machines. It's going to be about twice as big as what's in Gallagher Iver right now. It'll be a first class facility all the way. This will be just for football. That'll free up the Gallagher Iver weight room and locker room area for other sports in the, in, the, in, the, in the university. Sports you can't get away with and still hold up, then you yank out the last ones and let the stuff drop. Is that the way it works? That's the way a lot of it works. As far as taking that plywood down. So you see they've left some key supports in and they've taken a lot of them out. We're getting ready to wreck this area and drop this area pretty quick. Well, you can see it, they're down to four floors and these are all on uh, the Indian centers too, so... It's almost like... This whole area up. It's almost like fire in the hole. It's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta, be, you gotta <laughs> be that conscious of who's in there and who's not and clear that area out before you drop it. So, we just stay out of those areas when they're working in them. Digging the hole, the first thing we have to do is decide if we're gonna shore the bank or open cut the hole. If we open cut the hole, we have to lay the, sh lay the bank back two to one. In other words, two feet back for every foot vertical that we dug, which would have taken this excavation well back towards Cordell Hall over there. What we did is we put a shoring system in that consists of uh, drilled piers, 36 inches on center, uh, 30 inch drilled piers, 36 inches on center. So there's six inches between the piers. We just drilled a series of those piers down about 30 feet into the ground on the average, all the way around the perimeter of the hole. So when we dug on one side to dig the hole for the basement, uh, we let the, that, that holds the dirt back on the other side. That's what I expect. This is a matter of safety. You'll notice they're sliding around all of our cranes. We don't like anybody with the operator to go inside of there because if the crane was to swing around, it could actually pinch a person between the carriage of the crane and the, and the frame. You can see the exterior steel, or what we call the outboard steel, starting to rise up here on the south side right now. You can't see that from the webcam yet, but there's a lot of steel being put in place, and soon enough you'll see it rise above the precast risers, and it'll match the full height of the stadium on the south side there. You can see Washington Street in the background over here, and the, the plan right now is to bring Washington Street down along the west side of Cordell Hall, and about where I'm standing here to make an S-curve to go back over and tie into Hester Street across the front of the engineering building. This, is a, this ramp you see here is an offshoot or an off-ramp from that bypass that will take you down underneath the stadium. We can walk down, uh, down the ramp and you can see where the retaining walls are just being built. We can walk down into the ramp and see some of the work that's going on. At some point in time this ramp becomes a covered ramp and that's where Hester Street slash Washington Street connection is going to go over the top of it. This is a bundle of ties they use. Every, all the reinforcing steel is tied together, uh, depending on how, how, the, how it's set up, but about one foot on center here, there's a tie on every piece of reinforcing steel here, just to hold it in place, especially on a radius wall like this. Uh, it's very difficult to hold the rebar in place when the forms come along. You can see where we're starting to form the, uh, finishing forming the upper deck. Uh, this, where you see the edge of the formwork there is about where the, the tunnel goes underground. And uh, that's where, that's where uh, the new Washington Hester Street bypass will connect over the top of this tunnel that we're in right now.